In this video I want to show you how you can identify volume peaks in your track so that you can tackle them and make it easier for yourself in mastering later. And why does this actually matter in mastering? Because once we go to mastering we want to increase the volume, the gain of our track. So we will boost our track's volume and then we will hit a ceiling here. So we can set the ceiling here, for example I have set it to 0 uh, dBs true peak. Uh, you can set it to whatever you find good but I, I kind of like master to this so minus 0. One or something and once I increase the gain here you will see that the red line kind of like limiting once it hits the ceiling. And if you fix the problems kind of like earlier than in the mastering, so for example if you have very loud sounds which might be too loud or very loud sections or usually at the end of kind of like a block of a 16 bar block you add starting risers and stuff and it gets louder. You can compensate for that if you identify those spots. So the first method I want to show you is a really really simple one. You just hit command shift R and you come to the export audio video menu and in this export audio video menu you set the rendering start and the rendering end so whatever your track length is and then you put it here to master 44,100 wave 24 bit no deezering so that's kind of like a good set of options you usually have you're sending your tracks to labels for example and then you will export your track and I already did this in my track here and as you can see this is basically the master of my track so that's everything exported here and you can already already see there are some uh, spikes here there's a spike uh, here there's like a huge build up where I have like a kind of like a lot of volume and that's the areas you want to look in first so because um, sometimes you don't even need that volume sometimes it's just like something which tricked you maybe it's an effects which is too loud that's usually things you anyways want to fix regardless of the mastering so let's check if there's something too loud here <laughs> So I think the loudness of that pad is still cool. Maybe I could reduce it 1 dB or something, but I like it. And also if you look, it's not the highest point in the track. If I look here in the level of my master, I'm peaking at minus 5.95 dBs. And maybe you're asking yourself right now, yeah, should I, shouldn't I leave like 5 dBs headroom or something for mastering? Uh, I personally don't agree with this because um, I think you can go to 0 dBs. If you have like a mastering engineer, he can just turn down the whole track to what Whatever level he needs headroom um, but anything you're kind of like wasting here if you go for example like minus 15 dB's headroom you're just like missing bits which you have in your final export then so I would go to kind of like as close as 0 dB not higher than 0 dB but as close as you can get to 0 dB's here on your master let's check this area here where we have this huge build up and let's see what we maybe can do about it If we look again at our master level, it's minus 2.62, probably the loudest peak in our track here, as we can also see visually. So that's maybe something we need to address if we want to get like our track to a very loud level. But one thing I want to mention here, it's actually not the loudest thing in your track which controls how loud you can push your gain in, in the limiter. It's the thing which kind of like sounds most screwed if you turn up the limiter. And an easy way to find out if you're pushing your limiter too hard and if your track kind of like falls apart is if you have the Pro L here and you go here to the output options and you set 1, 1. So if you have set this, the limiter won't increase the loudness, which usually tricks you because louder sounds better. It just keeps kind of like the same level, but it outputs how distorted it sounds. So um, let's say I'm playing this now and I'm pushing the gain a lot here in that section. You can basically hear how much the limiter screws up your track. That's actually the final decision you should make. It's not about the loudest thing in your track, but it's more about how the limiter will kind of like kill your track. But as said, the most important thing is what you hear in the end. So what 
kind of like gives you the best result um, when you push this. But let's say we want to now reduce the volume here. What could we do? We could look into individual elements which contribute to the volume here. And it's usually in my experience the lows which kind of like define or add most to the loudness of the track because um, there's more energy. So one way you can usually go is if you have all those risers, you could start like filtering out kick and bass and you're taking a little bit away from the slow energy and you still get that kind of like upwards movement so we could add like a filter point here just saying in this part it won't work that good because we have that little kick uh, coming here uh, but i just want to show you the concept let's say we wouldn't have that one here now and we filter it out a little bit along the way and now if we play We still get very loud, so this didn't really solve our problem. So let's check other options we have. Let's look maybe more into the elements which cause the loudness here. Let's deactivate this one. So it's not from that one. Probably that Atmo which I listen the most. Yeah, this already wins a little bit, but we we'll still want to have that. Let's check it in solo. First, we can see that it's probably like one dB or two too loud. So let's fix that. Let's give it like minus 9.5. And maybe we can cut a little bit from it. And as you can see, we already won 0.8 dB. So it's a little bit like fiddly, so you need to check like a lot of elements and maybe you could add like clippers or limiters or whatever, or some compression here, or filter out frequencies like I did. So there are many, many options you can do, but with that technique, you can investigate very easy where you need to solve your problems. The next option we can do, we can bounce our master with a gate. And by that, we only get the output in our master, which is exceeding the gates threshold. So for example, let's say I don't want to have anything in my track louder than zero dBs. Uh, I know that I don't have it right now, but um, then I could set this to zero dBs. And let's say maybe I don't want to have anything louder than minus five dBs, then I could set this to minus five dBs. I will set the return rate to the same and I will put attack, hold and release all at the lowest value here because I don't want to have it like attacking later than it actually is louder than that. Uh, the floor to minus infinity. So whenever um, it's below that level, it will duck the whole volume. So there's no sound at all. If I would play the track now, you wouldn't listen to anything because it's not exceeding that gate. Let's artificially push this until we exceed the gate. Then you can see basically what happens. And if you would start bouncing this now, then you would only get the peaks and you can also see where in your track you're actually louder than the limit you set. And the last thing I want to show you is a little Max for Life device I created. Um, it's very easy, you just put it on, you set the limit here, and whenever it hits the limit, it will stop your track immediately. So, so you could, for example, uh, set the limit to zero dB, play the track, go grab a coffee, and it will stop your track once it hits that um, level here, and then you can fix it at that point. It also will show you the highest true peak it detected, and where, at which bar, um, here in the timeline this happened. So this, this is basically your transport here and the same here. So if I play this, I will just mute this after the plugin so that I can talk while I'm playing. So as you can see, this is basically the true peak limit it detects. And if I would kind of like set it now lower, then it would stop the track. The watchdog and the gate uh, with those settings, I will upload to my channel members. So to the middle tier, the hamsters, 
um, who hamster all the stuff and um, have fun with it and maybe it improves some of your mixes or mastering in the end. Uh, I hope so. Also big shout out to Dave K and Niels F, my new channel members. And it's a very new program, so if you haven't checked it out, I have a video up here. And if you're one of the first channel members and on the higher tier, we will have a question answer session, a monthly track feedback round. And personally, I think it's the best uh, time for you to join because the program is new, not many people joined. So I will have a lot of time to answer your questions and to go over your tracks in the monthly feedback round. And if you have any topics you're interested in my YouTube channel, just put it in the comments or whatever you want to know and maybe I make a video about that. So see you on my channel membership and on the next video.